If you remember a couple of months ago, we had done a video on the X1 versus the GLA and that wasn't quite a fair comparison because on that exact day of filming, Mercedes-Benz India launched this. This is the 2024 Mercedes GLA 220D 4MATIC and it has a whole bunch of things which are upgraded from the previous model. So let me tell you all about this amazing new car. Mercedes-Benz India has done an update with not only just the car but the sort of variants and engines and everything that you can get. Now you only get three options when you want to buy a GLA. You get the GLA 200, the GLA 220D 4MATIC and the GLA 220D 4MATIC AMG line. And this is the AMG line variant as you can see with its crazy looking bumpers, flashy looking wheels. We'll come to that in just a minute. But now you cannot buy the GLA 220D in front wheel drive format which is quite a big thing because you can only get it in 4MATIC now. Even if you don't get the AMG line one, the normal GLA 220D comes with 4MATIC. And the price difference between an AMG line car and a normal GLA 220D 4MATIC is around 2 lakh rupees. And compared to the X1 18D M Sport, this AMG line is actually quite a bit more expensive, 6 lakh rupees. Now, if that is justifiable or not, that you can decide at the end of the video once you hear all of the features and quirks this thing has. But let's get on to what is different with the new GLA now. You get a brand new set of LED DRLs and a brand new headlight as well. You get updated taillights at the rear which brings it more in line with the current lineup of Mercedes-Benz. You get a brand new steering wheel which looks very similar to the S-Class and the E-Class. I think it is the S-Class and the E-Class steering wheel. Lovely flat bottom steering wheel with a whole bunch of controls on it. You also get an updated MBUX system which gets wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and they've removed the trackpad in the middle and they've created some more space to keep stuff. Now that we have spoken about the differences between the pre-facelift model and this new 2024 GLA, let's talk about what you get when you pay that extra 2 lakh rupee premium for the AMG line variant. Now first off and of course the most visible one is the body kit. You get AMG style bumpers on the front and on the rear and you get this little cool diffuser and exhaust tip kind of thing going on at the rear. Well, it's not really functional, but at least it looks really cool. Uh, you also get these lovely looking five spoke AMG style wheels and you also get a performance upgrade with the AMG line car. Well, it's not really a power upgrade, but it's something definitely which is safer compared to the normal GLA 220D 4MATIC. In the front, you get drilled brakes, which will of course help in stopping the car and you know, just having better braking performance. Let's talk about all of the other things about this AMG line trim on the inside. On the interior, this thing actually looks and feels like an AMG. Now, I'm not sure if that is a good thing or a bad thing. Definitely a little bit of a bad thing for AMG owners, but for someone paying 58 lakh rupees and getting this sort of an interior, I think so. it is fantastic because just look at it. You have these lovely suede Alcantara seats with red stitching. You have suede and Alcantara on the door panels. You have this lovely carbon fiber-esque trim all around the car. And once you start driving this thing at night, that is when it actually comes to life because of the amazing ambient lighting that this car has. You also get this lovely looking five spoke, I guess, uh, steering wheel with a flat bottom, red stitching on the inside, perforated leather and overall this is a fantastic interior. I really think that there isn't an interior like this in this particular segment. And what I love about the GLA is that it does not feel like an entry level Mercedes Benz product. It feels like the full shebang. So how about we take it out for a spin and talk a little bit more about how it is to drive. First thing that you notice when you start driving the GLA is the insulation. I really can't hear whatever is going on on the outside and that's a very good thing. The other thing is that I feel the suspension is 
really comfortable especially when you compare it to the BMW X1s i drove that car not too long ago and i personally feel that this is the more comfortable car in that video i had said that the GLA was the more sporty car of the two and especially in this AMG line uh, variant it feels really sporty with the alcantara suede carbon fiber finishes and the AMG bumpers but overall i think so it is the more versatile car because it has a couple of different personalities which you can change when you go into the driving modes you have a couple of driving modes you have uh, eco comfort sport individual and most importantly it has an off road mode which the x1 does not get at all now in the off road mode of course you know the traction control stability control abs and all that gets tweaked slightly and with the four wheel drive system i'm pretty sure this thing is definitely more capable than the x1 but let's be honest it's not a full blown ladder frame chassis you know land rover defender or even a mercedes g wagon in that sense it can do some soft roading it can go over some tall obstacles but it's not going to be a rock crawler of any sort uh, what i do like is the sound of the engine now i'm going to be completely honest this does not have a crazy exhaust system or it does not have the 2 liter turbo four cylinder from the GLA 35 but uh, the boys at Mercedes have installed some i think so cabin sound for the uh, sport mode so once you flick it into sport and let's just do that it definitely does not sound like a diesel i don't know if you heard that or not doesn't sound half bad even though it's artificial sound i do actually enjoy it when you start pushing i really like that grunty sound and it definitely delivers in that sense talking about the speed this thing is actually pretty rapid for a diesel crossover uh, 0 to 100 kph in 7.5 seconds which is pretty commendable some things that you do need to get used to are the steering controls and the gear selector like most mercedes is nowadays uh, the gear selector is on the right hand side it's basically a stop so if you're coming something from especially like a japanese car you will uh, mistake this for a turn signal indicator so you know just be a little careful in that sense and the other thing is this control over here so uh, to control the menu you have some controls on the left hand side of the steering that touch sensitive it does take some time to get used to and i am sure if you own this car you won't be complaining about this steering wheel setup because these touch sensitive controls do take some time to get used to but once you're used to them uh, i think so they're pretty easy to use i remember i had gotten the pre facelift gla 220d a couple of years ago and in a couple of days i was pretty accustomed to this the instrument cluster also gets a couple of different things you have different themes for the instrument cluster currently i'm in the classic setting you get a sport setting a minimalist setting and a whole bunch of other stuff uh in terms of space i think so it's pretty decent but if you compare it to the x1 the x1 is definitely the bigger car if you're looking for a bigger family hauler you know uh probably you should go for the x1 but this is not bad in terms of space you get a decent size boot you get decent space in the back and it's nothing really to complain about but if you want that full on space uh, on the inside the x1 is definitely a little step above this overall i think so the gla is a very sporty car to drive the h speed dct is not the most responsive thing out there but it's pretty snappy when you put it into drive uh, in manual mode it struggles sometimes to you know keep up with your inputs but that's pretty much the only complaint that i have when it comes to the driving of this car the engine is pretty responsive it's definitely faster than the x1 i haven't really driven the q3 too much so i can't really comment on that but in terms of a diesel engine i'm pretty impressed with this 2 liter turbocharged diesel picks up and goes whenever you want it to just like right now pretty all right and it has no drama because it has the formatic all wheel drive system and if tech is what you like the gla is crammed with it you get a collision warning system with active brake assist you get parktronic which allows you to park without any hassle hands free access to the boot 360 degree cameras with blind spot monitoring and it gets seven airbags to make sure the occupants are safe at all times 
Overall, the GLA is quite the complete package with a whole bunch of features that will impress your friends and family whilst giving you that driving experience which will put a smile on your face. The engine of the GLA is pretty nice too. The 2-litre turbo diesel packs a hefty punch, making 188 horsepower and 400 Nm of torque, which is connected to an 8-speed DCT gearbox. It is noticeably faster than the new BMW X1 18D with almost a 40 horsepower difference and a 50 Nm of torque difference. The Q3 only comes in petrol, so that is not comparable to this particular variant. But in my opinion, a car like this should be offered in diesel formats too, because of their torque benefit and fuel efficiency. Talking about efficiency, this is rated to give 18.9 kmpl, but I'm sure you can get slightly more if you drive it properly. So what are my final thoughts on the new 2024 GLA 220D 4MATIC AMG line? Again, it is quite the mouthful, but this thing is a brilliant piece of machinery. I love the way this thing drives. It's definitely the sportiest of the bunch. Uh, I love the interior. I love the way it looks and overall, it's a very, very nice car to own. Now, when it comes to the price, well, the GLA 220D, like I said, is almost 6 lakh rupees more expensive than the X1 18D M Sport. Yes, you do get more kit and if that price bump is justifiable or not, well, that is up to you. And considering that Audi is giving ridiculous amounts of discounts on the Q3, again, that is something that is for you to choose. But at least you get an all-wheel drive formatic system with the GLA 220D which instantly gives it an edge above the BMW X1 because that does not come with all-wheel drive anymore. And I feel that these cars should come with a diesel variant. At least you should have the option and that again gives it an edge over the Audi Q3. So if I was buying a crossover premium SUV of that sort, I would definitely pick the GLA 220D formatic AMG line. Yeah, I haven't got, I've gotten kind of tired saying that. So thank you so much for watching this video. Tell us in the comments down below, would you pay the extra 6 lakh premium over the X1 18D M Sport for the GLA 220D uh, or what you would choose in the segment for the same price? Comment all of that down below. Subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you in the next one.